Hey everyone and welcome to another episode about the LEGO Train Automated Container Terminal. This episode should be about the uh, site structure, the uh, warehouse that I was going to build. But I haven't received all the BrickLink orders yet. I'm missing one essential BrickLink order with parts all over the place in the build. So I just have to wait until that uh, order has arrived. Um, it has been three weeks now. so. I don't know about you guys, but when do you start giving negative feedback on a BrickLink order? Um, waiting three weeks for a domestic shipment after payment is too bloody long, according to me. So I'm, I'm, I'm a bit like, okay, it, it could happen, but yeah, it's, it, at least I'm going to give him neutral, but, but I think about giving him uh, negative feedback because it took so long. I asked him about it and he was like, hey, yeah, I'm going to ship it uh, soon, blah, blah, blah. And it still took another week to ship it and uh, that's just too long. So let me know how, how you uh, guys would uh, respond in a situation like this. Um, this is new. This is our little control cabin that hides all the wire. Because below, all the wires, because below there's the, uh, the control unit, the uh, microcontroller. As you see, it's it's a pretty pretty simple plain thing. There's a guy inside pulling some levers, and <laughs> based on that, the whole thing moves. So um, the door is still missing. Um, that's also part of that uh, brick link that is still missing. So since I'm not able to build my uh, little side structure, I had to work on my crane. Um, which isn't a bad thing because uh, there are some things I needed to do. So uh, one thing that I needed to do was define a starting position. For example, when I enable the, uh, the system, when I enable the system, how does the system know where the containers are? I thought about that and I came up with the solution that the monorail cars will be empty when the system is started and every container for this crane will be in the container yard. All right, there are six positions for the containers. How does the system know in which position, uh, how many containers there are? It can't, so we have to measure that. So that's why I installed in here, actually below here, a little infrared proximity sensor. And this proximity sensor can uh, measure the, re uh, the distance between itself and the floor or th the roof of a container. And based on the uh, return value, I can determine how many containers are in which spot. So that works just fine. I'm going to show you. Uh, another thing that is actually quite funny, um, I installed some lighting below uh, this moving unit here uh, to have a cool effect and some additional light when uh, the crane is operating and it turns out i don't know why I, ca I can't figure out the physics but it turns out that the infrared sensor is more precise more accurate when i've enabled the lighting so i don't know why it's it's like it's like okay uh, Maybe the LEDs are emitting some kind of frequency that, that also is between in, in the range of, of the IR sensor or something like that. But anyway, if I enable the lights, the proximity sensor gives a more accurate measurement, which is cool. So the lighting looks cool and uh, so the whole thing looks cool now. So um, I'm going to show you how that actually works. I'm, I'm calling it a subroutine. I'm calling it a scan container. So when I enable the power, um, it's going to uh, measure every position, every of these six positions, it's going to measure the distance between itself and the containers or the ground. And based on that, it um, knows how many containers there are in every spot. So it's going to... Uh, to filter out some noise, um, I'm going to make five measurements per container. So what you're going to see is there's a small flash coming, a short flash. And in that flash, it measures five times the distance between itself and the containers. And I'm going to take an average of that to filter out some noise. And based on that, I get a nice value. So I'm going to enable the system by enable, enabling the hub. 
and the first thing is going to do is going into its beginning position and based on that you see it's measuring the containers well that's it so this is only a sequence that it needs to do in the uh, the beginning of the program when the power is enabled uh, so it knows its status of the uh, of the containers and after that when you move containers around you uh, just have to update a variable that tells how many containers are in which position that's it all right pretty easy stuff now the next next thing that uh, i had in mind was that i want to move randomly containers from the container yard to the monorail and vice versa so um, i've written a subroutine that now randomly picks a container spot and based on the variable that tells how many containers there are in that sp particular spot it knows how far the grabber needs to go down so it goes to uh, x y position of that container it goes I don't know, one container down, two containers down, whatever. Picks it up and places it on the monorail. So what it basically does is that uh, it generates a random number between one and six, corresponding with uh, the six positions of the containers. And for example, if it's uh, three, uh, that's this one, um, it goes to this position and it picks this container up. When it's, for example, six, the random number generated, that is that place that has no containers. Um, it knows that it has no containers and it goes along and generates another number. It doesn't take a lot of time to do so for the microcontroller, just a few microseconds. So um, I could generate a random number only with the spots that have actually containers on it, but it's a lot of work. And since it only takes a few microseconds to generate a new uh, random number, yeah, no problem. So um, that's how we're gonna do it. So um, that's what I'm gonna show you next. I'm gonna upload the program and I'm gonna show you how it's uh, moving the containers randomly from uh, the container yard onto the monorail. All right, here we go. Seeking its initial position, it was already there. Now it's going back to its initial position, reset the encoders of the motors, and now it's gonna pick the containers. That one did go a bit rough. Oh. Ooh, pick that one not completely straight all right did not go 100% well as you can see this container here is not completely straight um, I saw two things uh, what did I see um, I don't know why this happened it was a bit uh, not completely straight this one here, um, it went a bit too far up and uh, the, the tubes of the tubing of the pneumatic system were in the way, so it got a bit stuck. So um, let's do one more test and I'm going to prove you to you that it's all random. So I'm going to leave another spot open. Uh, let's put three containers on this spot. Yeah, that looks nice. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> the reset button is uh, below here can't reach it now all right I'm gonna just upload the program once more and then uh, it'll reset itself it's the most easy way to do it right now let's make these containers a bit tidy if you're beginning with an offset of with the containers on the container yard uh, that offset can be a problem later on so you're gonna start with the containers nice and tidy in their position 
Let's start once more. Scanning. Resetting the encoders. Here we go. Yeah, was the pneumatic tubing again. Pop. And there we go. We have loaded three containers. Now this is what 1000 lines of code look like. <laughs> I'm very happy it works. There are just a, m a few minor things that I need to uh, adjust. And um, yeah, happy with the result. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. The next episode will be about the bricks that you see here and the bricks that are still missing on the brick and quarter and we're going to build a nice warehouse we're going to put it over there so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if so please leave a like uh, leave a comment what you think of it and uh, hope to see you next time bye